Hi, in this week's weekly roundup, we have ramps boards, FPGA boards, obscure sensors, a Kickstarter second attempt, and a unicorn. Unicorn? Seriously, guys, what's with the unicorn bit? There's a bunch of cool things on Kickstarter this week. If you've ever had issues programming your ESP modules due to lack of power from the USB port, then you could pick up this programmer on Kickstarter or else just buy a powered USB hub. This next one I really like. It's a low cost braille display and keyboard for an iPad. It looks promising, but I doubt it'll get the funding with only under three weeks to go. A real shame. If you're into CNC or 3D printing, then you'll find this board interesting. This board contains an LPC1768 ARM MCU running at 100 MHz, which means it'll be able to keep up with faster prints. It also has onboard SD, MOSFET and stepper drivers, thermistor inputs and GPIOs, all with 5V tolerant pins. It can connect to a range of LCDs via SPI or I2C and runs SmoothieWare. Great upgrade that does it all. Oh, this looks familiar. It's the same RTK box campaign that was cancelled a while ago, but it's back up on Kickstarter with the same level of interest. Things have changed a little, but it's really more of the same. This is a good idea. It's an all-in-one user interface box that you can program to control whatever you want. It's a box that contains an Arduino U1 compatible, Wi-Fi, RTC, EEPROM, SD, buzzer, NRF24 header, LCD, LEDs, and buttons and rotary encoder for user input. Security through obscurity isn't a good idea ever, but sometimes it's fun. It's a small Arduino that uses a piezo to detect movement, so you can get it to turn a relay on or off with a knock sequence that you can program. Here's another education product on Indiegogo. It's a change from the usual in that it's just an extension board that plugs into a PC. So no MCU on board. It contains a range of sensors, motor drivers and inputs and is programmed without, apparently, any previous programming skills. Only one interesting thing on CrowdSupply. The LoRa soldering kit is in pre-launch status on CrowdSupply. It's a kit that contains an RN2483 LoRa module, at Mega 32 u 4 Raspberry Pi compatible header, and a small prototyping area. A few interesting things from the major shops. Adafruit have their Metro Mini back in stock. It's a small at Mega 328 based board with onboard 5V regulator, LEDs, and CP2104 USB to serial converter. It can run off either USB power or a 6 to 16 volt supply. Then there's a TFT hat, cape, or you know whatever you want to call it, that gives you a 2.4 inch 240 by 320 TFT display, resistive touchscreen, and an optional SD card. The screen uses the ILI 9341 chipset. If you saw my Teensy 3.6 review, you'll see how well it performed playing full frame video. DF Robot have a full 360 degree Hall Effect angle sensor. It's expensive, but also pretty accurate, able to measure down to 0.088 degrees. Outputs the angular position as a voltage level between 0 and 5 volts. Seed Studio have a number of add-on packs for their popular MBOT, the light and sound add-on, the servo pack, and six-legged robot, giving kids a bunch of cool new things they can make. Oh, a unicorn. I have no idea why they call it a unicorn. But, you know, SparkFun have a Pi Maroni LED Raspberry Pi hat, which gives you 64 RGB LEDs. Anyone know why they call it the unicorn? Then there's the Displayotron Pi hat, which is a simple 16x3 character LCD, but also has six capacitive touch controls, RGB backlight, and eight LED bar graph. Pololo are getting ready for Christmas with a bunch of new addressable RGB LED strips in various lengths. Still quite expensive, but just the thing for that uber Christmas house decoration idea you had. If you're into robots, then the Robot Shop have an interesting new robot. The Mechanoid 2.0 XL Personal Robot contains the Mechabrain MCU, 8 servos, voice recognition and LED eyes. Has LIM, or Learned Intelligent Movement, whatever the heck that is, but it looks quite good. And on the tinny side... First up on Tindy, there's the Ultima, which contains the Atmel Sam D 21 g 81 a ARM MCU, OLED, micro SD, and LiPo battery management. It's programmed using the Arduino ID using the Arduino Zero board type, and makes available all the GPIOs you need, plus a JTAG connector port. Here's another external audio card. It's accessible primarily as USB audio device, but also via I2S or optical SPDIF contains a PCM2706 DAC and several buttons for further control. If you're looking at energy monitoring, then this board contains the ATM90E26, 
and has headers for Adafruit's Featherwing. You will still need a current transformer, however. The Mini Monster looks like a good idea for those wanting to quickly set up control over something remotely. However, I can't for the life of me see what MCU they're using on it. It's a fairly complete module with web server, ethernet, multiple sensor inputs and outputs for servos. There's even an internet enabled demo site. Now everyone, don't try it all at once, you'll end up crashing it. FPGAs are the future for makers. There's a lot of advantages to FPGAs and I am seriously thinking of running a Kickstarter that will make FPGAs more accessible to makers. In the meantime, we have things like the Ice Hat, which is a Pi Hat with onboard Lattice Ice 40 Ultra FPGA, three Digilent PMOD headers and I2S. It's not the fastest FPGA around, but is a good start into the world of FPGAs. The Genie APL5 is a subcompact board from Aeon, with the same CPU as the upboard. Contains a SODIMM socket for up to 8 gigs of RAM, VGA, LVDS and HDMI out, audio in out, 4 USB 2, 2 USB 3, 4 UARTs, MSATA and also SATA 3.0, all running off 12 volts. My IR tech have a small compact e-module running the Xilinx C7Z015 SOC, which contains a Cortex A9 ARM CPU and Zinc 7000 FPGA. It's very similar to the pink Z1 board I featured in last week's roundup, but contains 4 gigs eMMC, 32 meg flash, 1 gig DDR3, Ethernet and USB ports, and is designed to attach to this development board, which greatly expands out the GPIO and interface options. With JTAG, SD slots, USB hub, CAN, PMOD, LCD, HDMI, etc, etc. Another great board if you want to get serious with FPGAs. And from the cheap side of town we have Banggood with a couple of dust sensors from expensive laser based modules down to cheap LED modules. I'm actually picking up a couple of these for a tutorial I'll be running around Christmas, so stay tuned for that. And for some reason Tesla coils are a big thing this week. If you're lacking any spark, maybe just pick one up. Then there's a cheap stepper motor driver module that can control two steppers at 12 volts and 3 amps at up to 16 micro step increments. Also has current control and short circuit detection. An alternative to the rearm ramps Kickstarter is this one. This is a kit containing an Atmega 2560, a RepRap Polo clone shield, headbed controller and stepper driver which can drive steppers at up to 32 micro step increments at up to 45 volts. Also has thermal and overcurrent shutdown for protection. Thanks for watching this week's weekly roundup. As always, links are in the description below and also on my website. Don't forget you can always follow or subscribe to me by clicking on any of the on-screen icons. And you can support me on Patreon by clicking up here. So thanks again for watching. See you next week.